It's our pleasure to have uh, Joshua, one of the um, uh, consultant, no, uh, coach on the ground. So he will tell us exactly what maybe goes amiss and maybe how to correct and maybe prepare yourself for the coach. One thing that I wanted to say, which Caroline already said is, once you tabulate the, all those things, make sure that um, it's also chronological. It makes sense. You cannot uh, tell we do to to uh, to buy you uh, to construct for you, and you buy the and 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 uh, um, you know if if you are, if you are constructing something, let it be a construction, and then there is something to put in. You know. Some, some, I saw something that someone said uh, they were they were um, building a house for a cow and then they put uh, um, a cow without a, uh, a cow shed or something like this. So it has to make sense, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. do everything. So uh, without um, talking too much and maybe telling you, let the we do uh, coach tell us exactly what he's looking at. Tell us all those secrets so that we can prepare ourselves. So, Karibu Joshua, we are so eager to hear from you. Okay, thank you so much, Simon. I don't know whether you are able to hear me. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much. So, as you've heard, my name is Joshua Kemboi. I am one of the business coaches um, supporting video entrepreneurs. And I began coaching actually the year 2020 20 November. Until to date, we've supported around 124 entrepreneurs across the country as Elder Hub. Uh, we do uh, contracted three coaching organizations to provide business advisory services. And one of the organizations I'm working with called Elder Hub is one of the business coaching organizations. So that is my name. Maybe I'm going to share my screen. Maybe you can enable my... Yes, I made your co-host. You can share. <coughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Maybe you increase your volume, Kidogo. Oh, you're not able to hear me. <laughs> Kidogo, <laughs> too. Like someone in the environment may not yeah, sure. <laughs> I have already skizza sasa. Eh, <laughs> Okay, let me share my screen. And then... Uh, just a moment. Just doing that. Are you able to see my screen? See it. We can see it. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to share about uh, a few things. The picture you see at the background are uh, among the coaches and the window team from uh, Germany, and we have the AZ staff, and we have someone from ASEC. So the things I'm going to touch on is a brief introduction about our coaches. I'm going to talk about the roles of our business coach, the approaches that we do is using when we talk about sessions, how many sessions are we doing. I'm going to talk about status of video coaching, and then I give a conclusion, which is pretty brief. So let us start with this. You can see a photo of a short guy and another tall guy. Uh, the short guy there is Joshua Kemoy, who is a coach. And the other guy is an entrepreneur in one of the villages, in one of the counties called Siaya here in Kenya. Behind us is a structure that is an apiary for keeping bees. This is one of the most successful projects we've had in Widu. And this guy is intending to start uh, exporting bees and the products of the beehives. So my definition there about a, a business coach, a business coach is a, uh, someone or a professional mentor who supports, educates, and motivates business owners. So from this, we are going to draw what are the responsibilities of a video coach. One of the responsibilities of a coach is to help video entrepreneurs to build sustainable businesses. When we talk about uh, video projects, what, what is the, the aim? It's not just uh, creating businesses, but we're looking for sustainability. Are these businesses sustainable? Can they stand by their own after the Udu supports? 
So the second role of the coach is to offer guidance and mentorship to widow entrepreneurs. When a coach be, uh, visits a business, he or she offers guidance and mentorship to the entrepreneur. Sometimes you have to review the investment plan and then you advise the entrepreneur that you might need to change this so that your business can have productivity or maybe you'll be able to have a sustainable project. And then another role of a coach which is most critical and most important is the monitoring of implementation of new projects and establishing methods for improvement. When I talk about monitoring, when we go to businesses, we do monitor to see sustainability. And in monitoring, we also have to see all the documents. Sorry, Joshua, I have muted you by mistake. I was muting Esther, then I oh. <laughs> muted you by mistake. Apologies. Okay, it's okay. So have you lost me or I just continue? Just continue. Okay, now I was talking about monitoring of the implementation of the projects. A coach has a very critical role. When he, visit, he or she visits a business, we have to see to monitor whether the business is being effectively and efficiently being implemented. If a coach finds something fishy, he or she might advise we do team to cancel the project because we are promoting integrity and we don't want people to lie. Because you can imagine someone has spent, has spared the money to invest in a business, to create employment and to generate income. So we normally emphasize on integrity. And then another role is uh, writing the report and making the submissions and we are going to see how this is done. Okay, the next slides, just a moment. Uh, I want to talk about the approach that we do take. Like you've heard from Simon and uh, Caroline, when you, you've been invited, when, when an, uh, an entrepreneur has been invited by someone in diaspora, the WIDU team has to moderate the project and to see the viability, whether it is practical. Once it has been moderated and accepted, now it is assigned to a coach. We have coaches in nearly all the counties in Kenya. So the coach who is nearby, that location will be assigned to that project. Now what happens, the coach will make a pre-coaching call. What is a pre-coaching call? A pre-coaching call includes introduction whereby the coach introduces him or herself to the entrepreneur, that is number one. The second thing that happens, the coach gets to know or finds out the exact location of the project. And then the third thing, Together, the coach and the entrepreneur are going to schedule a visit based on entrepreneurs for business. If the entrepreneur is available on a given date, that is when we agree that you're going to visit the business. And then finally, the entrepreneur is sensitized not to invest any money before the first coach. Entrepreneurs are not advised to spend any single amount of money before the coach comes. Because you might end up spending your money and then we come then we see the project is not viable, which will force us maybe to, to recommend to the widow team that this project is not practical. So what we normally do, we sensitize them during the pre-coaching call, not to spend any amount of money before we visit the project. Now, I want us to talk about the approach now on the sessions, how many sessions mm -hmm. as a coach has and how it's been done. If you see there on my right-hand side, my presentation. There is a beautiful woman there selling Omena. Omena in English, I don't know their whole words. <laughs> Caroline, maybe you can help me, Simon. I, I don't, don't know, know, but I think everyone here and I Fillets, I think so. they're called fillets or something like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then that is, <laughs> that is a coach. This project uh, was implemented in Kisumu within CBD. And this one of the women who inspired me in Widow Projects. She only applied for, I think it was 30,000 shillings. And uh, she was, uh, no, it was 15,000. The diaspora was giving uh, 3,500. She was able to invest, invest 3,000. No, they, together jointly, they contributed 15. That is 7,500 from diaspora, 
And then for her, she's gone with Tesla. She contributed 7,500. And then Win was able to grant much with 15,000. This business did wonders and we did a success story about her. So a coach has three uh, sessions or visits that is for regional grants. And for Corona Business Grant, we only do two sessions. So I'm going to show you what happens in every uh, session that we make our visits. So one, about the first session, it takes almost four hours. And why these four hours, I'm going to tell you the activity which comprises this business. The first one, once we come to the business, is the verification of business or project location. When the coach visits an entrepreneur, one, we want to establish where they are. Okay. Yes. Continue, Joshua. I think to some. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. So yeah, what I'm yeah. saying, what happens during the first session? We are just coming to verify the existence of the business, if it is an existing business or if it is a startup. Now, the second thing is verification of entrepreneur's details. We are coming to verify your official names, your phone number, that is the mobile number or the mobile money, and the bank account. Why are we looking at this? Because mostly um, the, the, the people in diaspora who are called now donors usually use M-Pesa to send money. Some are using bank accounts. So we want to verify whether the details are correct so that money will not be sent. Uh, to some, someone else. And then another one, we check whether the entrepreneur can access the video platform. If he or she can, because in uh, some cases, you realize that you find a person is uh, an elderly person or doesn't have digital skills. Now they are being advised to look for someone who can guide them. Or alternatively, you can also guide them during the first visit. Another thing that we verify on entrepreneurs' details we, we take selfie with the entrepreneur. That is the evidence that the coach was there at the business location. Because we attach these selfies to the reports that we are sending, so it is um, a proof that coach went for the coaching. Because you know here is Kenya. I can just make a call, call someone, I'm here, calling someone in Bungoma, doing the coaching over the phone, and then I submit a report that I visited the business, it is existing. So that is why we are taking a selfie together with the entrepreneur. Another thing, we take photos of the identity cards of both the entrepreneur and the coach adjacent together. And then most important, we discuss the investment plan. Now we have to look at the uh, investment plan. For example, now um, you, want to do, you want to do maybe dairy farming. Now we go through your project. We see whether the, the prices that you quoted are within the market price. We show you where, where, where you can do adjustment. We advise you that if you can do this, these can be the results. So we normally discuss the business uh, investment plan. Um, an entrepreneur can be requested to amend the investment plan if need be in order to help him or her achieve the project's goal. That is also what we usually do. Uh, during the first session also we do sensitization of new terms and conditions. We do have terms and conditions, which if an entrepreneur breaches, might lead to cancellation of the project. And so now we sensitize our entrepreneurs that these are the terms and conditions you must abide by. One of them, you need to keep all the receipts, all the documents related to the business. You need to keep them, that is one. Two, we sensitize entrepreneurs to produce ETR receipts. That is another one, because anything above 10,000 shillings, we must have a look at ETR, that electronic, uh, no, the ETR, uh, electronic tax uh, remittance. So that one is a must for any item which is above 10,000 shillings. Another one which is key, we normally emphasize that we see proof of payment, that is either M-Pesa withdrawal or M-Pesa payment. You know, nowadays in Kenya, you can buy goods using tin. So we need those proofs. It is a proof that money was paid, money was invested. So we normally emphasize that we have those documents. They are key. So that is among the things we're doing monitoring. And then on the terms and conditions, 
we emphasize on integrity. Any attempt to lie in the project leads to cancellation of the project. Another thing is verification of employment, the current employment and how many people are you planning to employ. For example, if it is a startup, a new business, of course, it doesn't have a place. But now, if it is an existing business, we establish how many employees the business has, including the owner, who is an employer, he is an employee in the business. And then how many people are you planning to employ within the new project? That is also something very key that we need to establish because you know one of the key motives or purposes of Hindu is to create employment in Africa and to generate income through building sustainable businesses. Something else we do is verification of current income. That is for existing businesses. We want to know at the moment how much money average for the last three months are you able to generate. So that after investing uh, during the window uh, project, we'll come later to see whether the grant and the joint investment had any impact in your business. Another thing we do is introduction to business canvas model. This is one of the best and the most important tools we normally take to uh, entrepreneurs participating in the project. A business canvas is a visual representation of a business model, highlighting all key strategies and factors. So it leads you from the beginning until the end. Uh, the business uh, investment, uh, 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 maybe a project proposal, and then it goes until goals are they going to be achieved, until you calculate the profit that you're going to make. Continuation, during the first session, we coach entrepreneurs on financial literacy. Under financial literacy, we are going to teach them about basic bookkeeping. Under basic bookkeeping, we have record keeping. Under this, we teach them about the distinction between personal and business related records. We normally emphasize and teach them on advantages of keeping accurate business records. We teach them how to prepare a profit and loss statements. We provide them with financial documents, which is financial track record templates, which has some columns to enter revenue, to enter expenses and income. One beautiful thing about these templates, it calculates for you profit automatically. You don't have to use a calculator. It is an Excel sheet, which can be used on a smartphone or on a computer or on a even laptop. So, this is one of the documents that assisted most entrepreneurs participating in the project to understand whether the business is sustainable or if it is productive. So we take them through these, we teach them using practical examples on how they can navigate through financial them. Another important thing is uh, we teach them how they can maintain employee list. Through this employee list, they are able to find out the productivity of the business, where they can do adjustment, looking at my productivity. Maybe I want to see what is the percentage of uh, maybe salary that I pay people. Do I have to lay off some people so that I maximize on profit? So those are among the things we take them through. As we come to conclusion of the first session, we also do project evaluation. After now taking through the entrepreneur, understanding the investment plan and what it's going to do, we evaluate the project now. We sit down and see. And then we establish the overall equation of the project in a scale of one to five. If we rate a project of an entrepreneur one or two, it means it is not a viable project. Either we can advise this entrepreneur to change the investment plan, to do some adjustments, or to venture into another project because someone presents a project, you see this project, it is going to be waste of time, waste of energy, waste of resources. So we deliver it to the entrepreneur that this thing you need to change. But if it is between three, four, and five, it is a viable project which needs to be supported. And then after doing all these things, the coach prepares a report and submits to the window team for moderation. Now, what you need to notice that after the first session and the coach finds out that everything is consistent 
with the investment plan, the entrepreneur is given a go ahead to invest the joint investment. Remember, I told you, I shared earlier that during the pre-con, we normally sensitize entrepreneurs not to invest any single cent in the business or the project until the court visits the business. Now, after the first coaching session, that is when we tell the entrepreneur, if you've received contribution from the donor and your money, you can now begin to invest. Because we've seen, we've given a green light that this project is sustainable. So that brings us to the end of the first coaching. And now when we are giving the entrepreneur a go ahead, we're giving them a go ahead to implement their joint investments. You had um, Caroline and Simon say that uh, you need to invest first the joint investment, which is 50% before the will grant, which is 50%. Now, we give you a go ahead to invest your money after sensitizing you on window terms and conditions. You keep the receipts. So one thing you need, uh, the entrepreneur needs to produce uh, when I come for second coaching, one of them is receipts, the normal receipts you get from the shops. Two is the ETR receipt. Three is the M-Pesa uh, uh, screenshots. But now there are some things which uh, one cannot access a receipt. Like now you're going to buy timber in a village, of course you cannot get a receipt. But now we have cash acknowledgement forms that we normally leave for enterprises. For those items which they cannot produce a receipt from a shop, we have a cash acknowledgement form, which is a standardized form that can be accepted. For employment, some people doesn't have receipts, but we have sample contract forms we normally leave the entrepreneurs with. They fill, they take a copy, so they can access all the documents. Maybe I think I'll finish the, all the presentation and then I'll take questions okay. later. Can I, can I quickly interrupt Joshua? Because there's one, before you move to the, to the next page, there's one area okay. where people ask, when, how does the coach communicate that we can continue? Do they call you? Do they write? Because sometimes the entrepreneur is still waiting for the coach to communicate that they can start with a joint investment. No, immediately during the first coaching session, after the session, the coach will tell you that will tell the entrepreneur to proceed now to invest before the coach leaves. So it is just after taking through the entrepreneur, sensitizing about terms and conditions, going through the business model campus, going through the investment plan. So the coach will have done all the adjustments where required, and then the coach sees that this business is viable. It can be a sustainable project and it is worth being supported by it. Now he or she gives a go ahead the entrepreneur that you can begin from today to do your joint investments. Yeah. Josh, I... Joshua, Joshua, just maybe uh, on that, so that it can be very clear. Uh, yes. If the entrepreneurs do not need to have maybe a written form or a form of communication, it means that it will have verbal communication on the ground, right? Absolutely. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we can proceed. Now let us come to the second visit or the second session. The second visit or the second session, it takes place after moderation of the first session report. This is now after the WIDU team has moderated the project based on the report that the coach uh, presents coach giving out a green light that these are sustainable business. It can create employment. It can generate steady income. It is worth supporting. Now, once it has been moderated, it will be sent back to the court. Now the court will make a call and even the entrepreneur will have gotten a notification either through the platform or also through mail. The widow team will have notified you that your project is ready for the second session the coach is going to conduct you. So the coach will take an initiative of calling the entrepreneur and then schedules a session with him or her based on their own convenience. And uh, this session, when it happens, it takes two to three hours, but at most or maybe at least two hours, not even three hours. What happens during these visits? Number one, we start again the process of verifying the details. We have to take selfie with the uh, 
the entrepreneur because some businesses you go, uh, the entrepreneur maybe is absent, maybe incapacitated, he cannot, he or she cannot participate in the second session and maybe they say no. Can you, maybe, can my brother or my sister or my friend do this on my behalf, which you don't encourage. So we have to take a selfie as a proof that the coach was in the business location. Also, we take a photo of the entrepreneurs and the coach ID as a verification. And then we do the verification of the joint investment, that is the entrepreneur and the donor. Now, under this, what are we verifying? Number one, we do the verification of the receipts and the coach takes photos of those physical documents. Remember, during sensitization of the terms and conditions of we do, the entrepreneur was sensitized to keep, to produce all the receipts during the second coaching, original receipts, the ETR receipts for items which exceeds 10,000 shillings, and M-Pesa payment screenshots, or maybe the bank account with the doll or payment as a proof of payment, so that we can know that the entrepreneur indeed invested this money. Because some entrepreneurs are so skeptical, they don't want to spend the money, they keep the money, and then they want to get money from we do maybe to squander. So what we do the first thing we come to the business is to do the verification of the receipts, and we take the photos. Number two, we do the verification of items bought in relation to the investment plan. For example, you say that uh, you want to do a dairy farming. You say that I'm going to construct uh, a cow shed and I'm going to buy timber. I'm going to do to buy iron sheet. I'm going to buy nail, uh, nails and other things. So in the court visits the business, he has to see all those things. One, we have to see the iron sheets. Maybe you said you're going to buy 10 pieces. The coach must see, must count the 10 pieces. The entrepreneur said that is he or she is going to buy timber. The coach has to verify the timber that was bought, cement and all those things. But sometimes when you give an entrepreneur a go ahead, there are some items maybe by the time you're coming for the second session, it will have been used like now sands in cement and nails. We might not be able to tell how many bags of cement were bought because an entrepreneur can tell you, I bought 20 bags of cement and they were used that you can see the first time you are here, we did have this flow. I used the 10 bags. So what we normally do for those things which are going to be used, particularly in construction, we normally tell entrepreneurs when they go and buy things like cement, they first take photos of those items and share with the coach before they use. Because by the time the coach will be coming for the second session, he or she might find out that you used, it will be hard to account for the quantity of uh, the items that were used. But for other things which are there like cows, you don't have to, uh, the data to doesn't have to take a photo because the coach will come and see the cow is here, this is the timber, this is wood, these are salon maybe for example, these are machines. So the coach will have to take photo of each and every item that is in the investment plan as the entrepreneur had said that he or she was going to invest. Another thing we are going to verify if there are changes in the income after the joint investments. We are going to see verification of employment. Maybe when the entrepreneur did a joint investment, there was change in employment. And then we do the project evaluation based on the joint investments. Also, at this stage, sometimes we realize that an entrepreneur goes to buy things. And then there's inflation of items in the shop. Maybe the time he or she was doing the proposal, the prices were low. So what you normally advise entrepreneurs to do, he or she can communicate to the court, and then the court will advise the entrepreneur to write a bill to it and explain that when I was going to buy my things, I realized that there was inflation in prices. I'm just proposing to do adjustment in my investment plan Maybe she had reached, she was going to buy 20 bags of cement and now she wants to buy 10 bags. Now she states that I want to amend my project 
maybe to reduce this quantity and maybe to add this because of the inflation or prices in the market. It is allowed to do changes in the midst of this. But what we do cannot allow, maybe you want to do a dairy farming, after it's given you a go ahead, and then you say, no, I want to do a salon. So you see that's a new project. We have to close this one and do away with it so that you're given a chance to submit another project, which will again start the first process of moderation, which we rarely do that because, you know, we are spending money to send a coach to come and do the evaluation, take you through these procedures, and then during the second session or the second visit, you say, no, I've changed my mind. I want to do this. That is a breach of terms and uh, terms and conditions of we do. Now, after this second session, we've done uh, the Joshua, evaluation. Joshua, yes. can I ask something about that part of, um, of um, what you just said about changing the investment plan? So yes. are, are we can so that means before the the we do sense their investment, mm -hmm. you can change the donor can change the current investment plan. Now the changes that we encourage is maybe uh, you can amend a few things, but ah, okay. not changing the entire project. Maybe you are doing uh, <laughs> a poultry project, and then you say no. I want to do a salon or maybe okay. just some minimal changes. Okay. Yeah, those minimal changes are, are allowed. Okay, because it's a very common question that we keep seeing. That is why I decided to interrupt. Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, we have entrepreneurs who goes along the way. They say, no, instead of buying this thing, I want to buy this. So long as whatever you are changing is, is uh, in relation to that business. It is allowed. There's no problem with that, so long as it is for the benefit of the project and the investment plan that the entrepreneur submitted, then it is allowed. Now, the last part is now the coach after doing the evaluation, of course, he or she writes the report and then submits to widow team, after which the widow will review the, uh, the, the report and then takes the next step. So can I continue to the third or I can yes. see there's a hand which is raised. You can continue Kevin. and then we can answer the, Kevin, let's just answer the questions at the end if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, so Kevin, maybe you can write it somewhere and then uh, we can proceed later. Okay, uh, the, the photo you are seeing here, this beautiful lady is a young woman, I think around 30 years in Kisubu, a place called Obambo Beach doing fish cage. Through this project, she's been able to make billions of money. It was a new business whereby she was beginning a new project on fishing. And uh, with their joint investment, they were able to, to, contract, to, to construct a fish cage. And then through the window money, they were able to buy fingerlings, to buy food, to pay for security, the staff who are working there. And within, within seven months, she was able to generate around 800,000 shillings through that investment. Wow. And I think there's a photo here of this young lady. This young lady is in Eldoret called Joan. Joan was doing a production of feeds, animal feeds, chicken feeds, and this lady did wonders. She was successful in the first project. And she applied after crossing the first project, she applied the second project to do dairy farm. Mm. She has created employment, she's making a lot of money, she's financially independent. As wow. you see her, she just received a widow grant like a month ago from widow, and uh, she's doing okay. This uh, lady in Kisumu called Widi uh, applied for the second grant, which is under consideration in Kisumu. So as we come to an end of second visit, you can see a photo of another beautiful lady. This young lady is around 26 years old. She has just uh, stayed at home for three years after graduation from India to university. She's in Bungoma. Uh, this lady sells packaging and wrapping bags, and now she's the major supplier in Western region. <laughs> Selling uh. this wrapping in Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, and Vihiki. She's the main supplier now. 
And she began a new project through Rebel Grant, and she's very successful. The other day, she applied. We've closed the project. She applied for the second round, and she was so happy. She got a feedback from Widu that was uh, two days ago that our coach is going to visit the business. She applied for expansion. So she's going to be supported for the second time and she's doing very well. So finally, and uh, this second visit, uh, a point to note, after the second session, the entrepreneur's grant applications can be approved or denied. It is not a guarantee that the grant is going to be approved. It can be denied if there are reasons to believe that the entrepreneur breach widows terms and conditions. These include, but not limited to, inflation of prices of items. Mm -hmm. Sometimes here in Kenya, <laughs> you find an entrepreneur writing for you that uh, <laughs> she, she's, <laughs> he is going to buy maybe Mabati iron chip with 5,000 shillings when you know Mabati is 750 shillings. So what you normally do, we don't even add my statement. This person is trying to steal money from we do or from the diaspora counterpart. So what are, the, the best thing or the best assistant the coach can do for this person is to write a report we do uh, team and tell them that no, this person has breached terms and conditions. And I, I recommend that this project to be canceled. Personally, I've recommended cancellation of around six projects which we, we, we did that. It is a sacred thing to do. So <laughs> I've recommended for around seven projects to be canceled because uh, there was inflation of prices and there was a lack of integrity. Because Kenyans are very tricky. I went to, to these projects and then someone takes me to someone's shop, oh. pretending that it is his shop. Eh? And I knew because I went there for the first time. So during the second visit, we did and then the third visit. The guy got grants. The guy got the grants from Widu and diverted the grants to another project, which was not Widu grants. Mm -hmm. Then I went there to see the project and then he had applied for the second round. When I went there, the guy took me to another shop and Kenyans are very grunty. They greet you, they give you soda. <laughs> then <laughs> they Primary. Tell you this. Yeah. <laughs> We are going to have some lines. So when I saw, I was telling the guy, you wrote in your investment plan <laughs> that you are going to buy uh, children's toys. Where are they? Then the guy tells, no, Josh, let me take you to our nearby, my, my aunt's uh, shop. You can take photos of this because we have to take photos of all the items you <laughs> say that you're going to buy. <laughs> yes, I just went. There was no problem. I took photos. I told the guy, say that you're going to buy Christmas lights, where are they in balloons? Then the guy tells me, oh, wait, 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 we have another store somewhere. Then he goes to a nearby shop, brings to me that they're here. So I did everything. The guy gave me some money. I told the guy, no, okay. And uh, I did the necessary. I wrote a report. We give the report the way things are open ground. And we were able to cancel that project. Mm. But now you can see, it is this gentleman losing. Mm. Someone in diaspora has agreed to support you to build for you a sustainable business whereby you can generate income. Through that income, you are going to improve the standard of living of your family and the beneficiaries who are going to participate there. Mm -hmm. There is no bank in Kenya right now who can pay to borrow 10,000 shillings. They need a lot of collateral, security, and whatever. They might not give you that money. Mm -hmm. But imagine someone from diaspora sweating. That is not free money. They are sweating there. You don't know the kind of work they are doing mm -hmm. they to get that money. Mm -hmm. And then you are trying to cheat us so that you eat this money. We can't allow that. Mm -hmm. So the best thing we normally do is to cancel that. And then something else that can lead to cancellation of the project is lack of integrity in the project. Of course, there are other factors. When we realize that there are some things which are not adding up, we normally close the project. We don't proceed to the second, which means that the project will be cancelled. And anyway, we do a good. They can give you an opportunity to submit another project whereby coach will come and other things. But the loss is for the entrepreneur. Mm. So I think we are done with the second session. We can come to the last one. That is uh, the third visit. 
Uh, and just like the second visit, it takes at least two hours. And uh, the picture you see there is an entrepreneur from Lucia, a place called Kudalangi, whereby you have flats in Kenya. And you can see there are some pipes running across the Shamba. This is another project that became very successful. And I think it's the third project the entrepreneur is doing with the donor. This project is an agricultural project whereby they're doing irrigation and uh, they're producing food, supplying food to three counties in Western region, that is Bungo, Busia, Bungo, and Kakamega. Mm -hmm. This project attracted the attention of farmers and the county government of Busia. You can't imagine that when there were products here, our uh, crops, uh, four counties, farmers from four counties were mobilized to do a field day in this mm. project. It belongs wow. to the, that, that young man you see, he's still a college student in Mombasa. And the other guy with the apron is uh, the farm, farm manager. So this project <laughs> went on air. It was recorded. It was in the radio stations and the local uh, TV uh, channels in the uh, Western. And uh, the field day was conducted whereby more than 72 farmers participated. Wow. And imagine it is a product of wheat. Look at how it is taking lives. Mm. This project has employed seven people who are getting constant, uh, a steady salary. income, I mean. They're getting salary, and that salary has enhanced the living standard of their families. Mm. So in this third visit, what happens? One, we do the verification of the details. Still, we take a selfie together with the entrepreneur. As you see this photo I took, I took with the entrepreneur, as a proof that I was in the business location. Two, we also take the photos of the entrepreneur and the coach ID, and then we do the verification of the grant investment. Now, no, the one in the um, entrepreneur and donor live about this. This should have been on the second session. The second session, it is the verification of the joint investment that is between entrepreneur and the donor. But now the, the third session, we're doing the verification of the grant investment and I'll just ignore the entrepreneur and the donor. Now what happens, you, you produce the receipts for the grant investment. The grant investment is the money for we do now. Now we need all the receipts based on the investment plan that the entrepreneur uh, gave we do. So we have to see the receipts. Those are the, the normal receipts, the ETA receipt for any goods exceeding 10,000 shillings, and then the FSA payment. And also, if employment was part of it, we want to see the employment contracts because we believe the entrepreneurs of those contracts. So we have to verify and also take photos and also ascertain that they are genuine documents. At times, we are forced to call. Uh, the, the supplier, because a genuine receipt must have contact with the supplier, the logo, and other things. So sometimes you have to call. There's this interesting project I, I also recommended to close. Uh, this doesn't mean that I'm a, I'm a person who closes projects for Kenyans. Eh? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving <laughs> out of, <laughs> out of uh, 124 projects we have done, I've only closed seven. So it tells you we've also supported 90 something projects to get funds. Mm -hmm. So not that I'm close. There's this gentleman who took me to someone's farm. It was a passion fruit farm. And the guy tells me this is what I've been doing. I'm very hardworking. Uh, and I normally sell these passion fruits to supermarkets. I've generated about 500,000 shillings in the last three months. So uh, it was also <laughs> the guy tells me this attack that I purchased maybe last week, but when you be coming for the second session, I want you to capture it that it was bought with good money. We do money. So the guy it's okay. So I went, I wrote my report. When I went there for the second session, the guy said that he was going to buy blender or blending trees from Kenwood. He was going to buy a generator, he was going to do piping and irrigation. So when I went for the second session, the guy produces a very old generator. I think maybe it was bought 15 years ago. 
Yeah, I took a photo of it. And then the guy showed me a blender. It, then he tells, oh, I've forgotten the blender. Oh, I don't know what you're going to do. And my wife is not in the house. Is it possible I take a photo of it later and then share with you? I told the guy, no, you're breaching tabs and conditions. The guy later sent the photo. Lucky enough, one of the moderators of Widow here in Nairobi has similar blender, which she bought from, <laughs> from Kenwood. So the guy wrote that she, uh, he bought the blender at 40,000 shillings, when that blender is 15,000 shillings. Mm. The receipts this guy produces, we tried to reach the, the supply, which is Kenwood. The guy did buy bought that blender from that place. So the best thing we did was to close the project. But you see, it was so sad. We feel so bad when we are closing a project. Because imagine this is a golden opportunity for a Kenyan to invest, and now they're trying to cheat. So uh, that is it. Now we do the verification of items bought in relation to investment plan. And remember also here, the entrepreneur is allowed to do adjustments. Maybe they go to the market, they realize there's inflation, or maybe they want to change something. Maybe they realize, I wanted to buy, um, maybe what can I use? Maybe for, for salon, the entrepreneur wanted to buy a dryer. Then she realizes, no, at the moment I don't need a dryer. I need to buy maybe chemicals. Then she, she would write to Widu, uh, notifying them that I've realized the priority now is uh, chemicals, which were not in the investment plan. I want to do away with this so that I invest in it. It is allowed mm -hmm. because it is for the good of the business. So we allow them. We give them a go ahead. And uh, we also do verification of current income. Maybe after joint investment, there were some changes. We want to see whether there was an impact after the joint investment. We also do the verification of employment because we want to know whether there were changes. When you did um, the, the investment, was there any changes? And um, we do the evaluation of the project now because it is the last session. We read the project because, of course, there might be an impact. Between first and third coaching, it might be one month, it might be two months, some projects take three months, others take even six months. Because someone doing rice farming, there are many things that take place here. There is, uh, there is uh, tilting the land. There, there are a lot of things taking place before we do the third coaching to come to the project. Now we write the report and then we do the submission. Uh, what you need to note, after the third visit, we do Africa, closes the project, and the entrepreneur is at liberty to apply again. That means an entrepreneur can apply for a maximum of three times in the case of original grant. But for the corona grant, it is once. You don't, uh, you're not eligible to apply again. But for original grant, you can apply three times. So the photo you are seeing here, is also in the widow website. This lady, they do entertainment and uh, she has explored all the three opportunities. And she's one of the first beneficiaries. I think she was beneficiary number two or number one in widow in 2020. I think she got grants that was early January 2021. She's doing very well. She said she has employed many people through entertainment. She has bought very powerful machines and her project is one of the successful projects that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, uh, I think she's around 27, 28 years, but she's changing lives. Mm -hmm. So we are happy for that. That is now all about the three sessions we have uh, in original grants. Uh, let me come to recommendation. Uh, personally, this is my own recommendation. Mm -hmm. Just hold on a minute, you, Joshua. If, yes. if the project has been cancelled because of integrity, yes, can they apply again? I'm a story may she apple. One of the opportunity. That is the beauty of what we do. They give you a second chance. Okay. You can do the same project, but of course you'll have to you'll have to be very genuine in your investment plan or you submit another project. Uh -huh. which the widow team will moderate. And if they find out that it is a viable project, 
they are going to send a coach for the first coaching session and it will begin afresh. They are coming now doing the pre-call and then the coach will come for the first session. So once they cancel a project, you are not blocked. The entrepreneur is eligible to give another shot. Okay. Uh, Joshua, maybe uh, that will come anyway, but um, yes. I think there was a question on the case of integrity issues, you know, yes. there was a, a price inflating or maybe something mischief uh, done and uh, realize that it has to be cancelled. Does the entrepreneur know the reason why it was cancelled? No, we, don't, we normally don't tell them. Give don't tell them. The, only, the only thing we tell them is that uh, uh, what we do team communicate is that uh, you violated due to terms and conditions. That's the number. Good. Because under terms and conditions, the entrepreneur is sensitized from the beginning. During the first coaching session, before discussing even the investment plan, what we normally sensitize them is about we do terms and conditions. If an entrepreneur violates or breaches even one, it leads to the cancellation of the project. Mm -hmm. We don't have to give them uh, uh, explanations. The only thing they were given the, 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 uh, the only positive message they get is that you can still try to apply another project. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, sure. We actually tell, tell them, treat it like it is your own coin. Absolutely. Assume it is your own coin and then you sure. be able to do things. And mm -hmm. think about like two to three years to come. This yes. business should still be running. Absolutely. Yeah, and the level. Yeah, you know, um, I've seen a number of projects which has inspired me so much. There is a lady here in Edward. I think maybe let me come to this uh, on my recommendation. I was saying that we do as both uh, to be a holistic approach towards creation of job opportunities. There is a need to scale it up. You can see this young lady, uh, these are rabbits. She is doing uh, rabbit keeping. Do you know with rabbit keeping, with 45 rabbits, one is able to make 1 million shillings in a year? 45 rabbits. Mm. One year, you make um, 1 million shillings. They export uh, rabbit meat to European countries. So it is a very lucrative business. So she's, uh, she's doing that, and we have a number of entrepreneurs doing the same business. Of course, in uh, my conclusion, we do an evidence-based approach towards realization of sustainable goal number eight on decent work and economic growth. The project has created sustainable businesses and generated steady income. That is the widow team I was sharing with you. We were in Naivasha for training. And uh, there's this project, uh, there's this woman in CIA who began, it was a startup, it was a pigs project. And she only began with five pigs. By the time I was going for the second coaching, she had around 67 pigs. By the time I was going for the third coaching, she had 182 pigs. <laughs> and she applied for another, uh, for another grant by the time I was going for the first coaching for the second chance, she had already sold the pigs to Farmer's Choice. And then from the first sale, she, she generated 600,000 shillings. She made the second sale around, I think it was 450,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And the third sale was 600,000 shillings. That is less than a month because <laughs> pigs are giving birth, I think. Is it after two months or three months? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's, a, there's a ready market. Interestingly, she has bought a very big lorry, a grand lorry. And in this second chance, she applied to, to, to fabricate uh, a machine for producing feet. animal feeds. Mm -hmm. wow. Now she's using the lorry to supply feeds across Siaya and even Kisumu counties, as well as selling. <laughs> the pork, and it began only with only five pigs. Yeah? Wow. And these five pigs, when I went to do the coaching session, I found this woman with, a, with an investment plan, which was not very okay. Then I had to refer her to another lady here in Elroy, 
who has done a successful pitch project, mm -hmm. of course, she's not an awarded project. We normally refer this data. As you can see, I share that uh, the coach mentors, they educate, and we can refer our entrepreneurs to other people who have done successful projects. Mm -hmm. So normally tell them before you begin investing, I want to recommend to refer you to someone who has done it very successfully. So they go there, they spend a day, they're taken through how you can implement this thing effectively, and they've succeeded very well because some projects are related. The one who did the beekeeping, I referred him to someone else I know. He went there, learned for two days. He went back and implemented. Now you see he's producing a, a, the Asali, he's trying to explore international markets. And then also another important thing is that uh, we normally provide our entrepreneurs with the digital skills like digital marketing. We are also trying to help them to explore both national and international markets. We are trying to link them with uh, available opportunities besides Wendy, whereby they can get uh, funds for sustainability. So a coach does a lot of work. So what the entrepreneur needs to do is to cooperate with the coach. If the coach tells an entrepreneur not to do this, he or she should not do that. If she or he is advised to do something, then she needs to do that. So the project will run very smoothly, they will get the grants, and the business will be very sustainable. Because now, if we visit the success stories that we have, the people who have participated in it, like this young lady I told you 26 years, uh, doing uh, supplying uh, packaging and wrapping uh, bags, the lady is generating a lot of money. At some stage, she told me, I don't want to be employed because I'm able to employ six people to do supplies. Now, recently, when I was going to close that project, this young lady, we were discussing on how she can import uh, machines for making these uh, marketing bags. These are business which is booming in Kenya. And we were able to Google and see how she can import and how she can do local public. So in this second round, she was thinking of how she can acquire such a machine. So you see people are having innovative ideas and the coaches are giving them ideas. Remember these are professionals giving you those ideas. Mm -hmm. So maybe that comes to the end of my presentation. And uh, I must say that I'm so thankful. If we have some questions, I'll be glad to answer them. So back to our lady, thank you so much. Wow. wow. Let's let's give him some digital clubs. <laughs> digital clubs. <laughs> I think this is one of the that session that you take home, you know, like what you have said is really very very inspiring. And by the way, we plan to bring we've done some interviews with some of the entrepreneurs, but I'm sure with the help of uh, Joshua and the Widow team. Exactly. We plan to have a success stories with these entrepreneurs who started with five pigs and now they're scaling it up just for you to see the impact of this project thank you so much please give us a feedback there's a link down there which i had dropped i'll drop it again just let us know what we need to work on nakama kuna pongezi feel free to applaud what we are doing we are both very, very passionate about the we do grant and the we do project and we want to see these businesses running even maybe hopefully to pass them to generations to come. So wow. that is the I, motto. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joshua, thank you so much. I think you, you brought it to the ground. That is not something that we are talking from Germany here. But we wanted to say again, there are people actually on the ground documenting all these successes. And we thank you for that, um, Joshua and Eldo Hub, for the good work. Wasalmi wa Jama wa Mbie, we have their work. And... <laughs> Oh, I was sent. I was sent with greetings by Sarah Chebogen and Makani. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Maybe Simon, I see uh, on the chat box, sir. Uh, yeah. There are many questions. Eh? Yes. I think one. Uh, how does one get a donor? To I've, I've tried to answer some, but maybe okay. you can flip through and see the ones that, uh, like uh, Nani, um, uh, the ones uh -huh. that I could not answer. Uh, oh, this is one, um, huh? Kevin Oloch is the one who started with the question of the ETR receipts because it's giving oh. uh, there was an issue with the ETR receipts and and uh, yes from Kenneth let's first start with Kenneth 
products okay. without ETR are cheaper as compared to those without ETR. With the ETR putting the SME at a financial disadvantage point, how do you address this? I was flipping through the question. Oh, oh yeah. thank you so much, uh, Kennedy. You know, ETR, we do cannot promote illegal businesses in Kenya. It is very wrong. Any business that is not able to produce ETR means they evade paying taxes, remitting their taxes. And uh, I don't think GIZ, uh, we do, is going to promote that. It is, it is a solemn responsibility of every Kenya to remit taxes. So there's no shortcut. And as I said earlier, we only require ETR receipts for goods exceeding 10,000 chili. And this is the law in the country. Anything above 10,000 government emphasizes must be given an ETR receipt. So there's no other alternative. The only things that you might not require an ETR receipt, maybe you've gone to buy, you've gone to buy sands, and maybe it is not a quarry, it is a local home. You're going to buy maybe 10 tons, and it is 15,000 shillings. We might not require ETR receipts. We have some acknowledgement, cash acknowledgement forms, which we do has designed, and we use them to account for the money. So I see also Kennedy said also when selling, does the SME need to include VAT in their prices? Uh, I think when it comes to selling, maybe you are selling your own pro uh, products, we don't come into that because mm -hmm. it's up to you to maximize your profit and to know how you're going to do uh, your food. So. And then at Kenneth, the coach can add a comment later. Oh, no, it was Caroline answering that. And then uh, Nelly, uh, no. I there was something that, uh, how do you hide uh, something about? <laughs> no, no, no. There's still <laughs> a question <laughs> from Kevin Oluoch about the yeah. ETR. Um, okay. have, Can you see? I have, <laughs> I have yeah, a big I, problem I, with that ETR electronic cash register over 10K. Can you see the no, question? You see, mm -hmm. uh, we, normally, we normally emphasize among the sensitization that we do for entrepreneurs, we tell them, please make sure you buy goods from a supplier who can provide with an ETR receipt. And trust me, all the entrepreneurs who dealt with it, they are able to produce an ETR receipt. Unless it is a Juakali thing, because sometimes there are people working in Juakali industry, most of the Juakali industries doesn't have ETR receipts. But before you invest, can you write to me that the things I'm going to buy are not currently made by Juakali, and I'll not be able to get an ETR receipt. Perfect. Once you get a go ahead, invest. Mm -hmm. But if you don't notify we do that the things you're going to buy, mm -hmm. you might not get an ETR receipt. You are risking cancellation of your project because you cannot compromise the terms and conditions. So all the entrepreneurs participating in WeDo, they are be able to produce ETRs and we are happy for that because it is a proof of payment. It is a proof that we do is supporting the country for tax remittance. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that has worked and uh, as I said earlier, there's no shortcut for that. We must abide by terms and conditions. In fact, that was his question of the Juakali. Uh, Juakali. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's already answered. <laughs> it's answered. Yeah. So who chooses or appoints a coach? Is it we do? How long does it take to get a coach? Is the project and investment plan we do platform filled in after the session with the coach? Or the donor can and it's a new things in these details prior. So let me begin with the first one, who chooses the coach? As I said earlier, we do have coaches all over the country, nearly 47 counties, and the coach who is within that vicinity. Uh, previously, before we got coaches in Western Project, uh, Western Kenya, I've been handling all projects in Western, in Nyanza, and part of uh, Rift Valley. But lucky enough, we now have coaches in Kisumu, we have coaches in uh, Mungoma, we have coaches in Akura and other places. So those coaches who are within the vicinity of the business are assigned the project to do the projects. And uh, how long does it take to get a coach? A coach is assigned after the widow team have moderated the projects. Once you do your application, it will be moderated by the widow team and then they assign the coach and then the coach begins the processes like the coaching call, first coaching session, second and thirds. 
and then is the project. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua yes. sorry. On that, that has been a very uh, common question, you know, yes. upon approval of a project. Yes. How long, how long or is the time span until the coaches uh, get in touch with the entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, you, you know, like the timeline, three days, yes. four days? Uh, thank you so much, Simeon. It doesn't take long time. Once the team has moderated and seen that this, business, this project can go the next day, you can be notified same day or even the following day. You are being notified that the coach is going to reach you. Our coach is going to reach you. So it, is, it can be hours, it can be a day. It, it doesn't go more than a day. Okay, yes. max, maximum of the, you know, like uh, uh, the days, you know, so that maybe people can orientate themselves. If you tell them uh, maximum day of uh, a coach getting back to you is two days or three days, then they so can work with that. Okay, once a coach has been assigned a project, a coach is advised to make a pre-coaching -co call same day. Okay. If, for example, today a project has been assigned to like tomorrow I'm going to Kitale. There's a project that is assigned to me to Kitale tomorrow. And then when I called the entrepreneur, what he did, he just laughed. I told him, Joshua, do you mean it is that fast? <laughs> that, I go, that I go to a mail in the morning, not mm -hmm. if I see that a coach is going to reach you, and you're just reaching me at 10. Mm -hmm. And he got the notification at 8 in the morning. So you see, what takes time is the arrangement between the coach and the Because the coach will ask the entrepreneur, when are you available? Mm. So you find that some entrepreneurs telling you that I'm in Nairobi, let's do it maybe Saturday next week. I'm not around. So you'll have to work with the convenience of the entrepreneur. But once the widow team has moderated the project and it has gone to the next stage, then the widow team assigns the project to the coach and the coach calls the same day. So the same day entrepreneur gets a, a mail and notification that a coach is going to be assigned is the same day the coach is going to reach the entrepreneur. It is very fast. So it doesn't take time. Thank you. Now, there's another question. Who feels, uh, I think, uh, is the project and investment plan on the video platform filled in after the session with the coach or uh, the entrepreneur and the donor and the entrepreneur fills in the details prior? Is it edible, editable after the coach's first visit? Okay. Now, the investment plan, I think Carol and Simon uh, tackled this initially. Yeah? What happens, the donor invites the entrepreneur. Once the entrepreneur has been invited, it is his or her responsibility to complete the investment plan. The investment plan, it takes less than 10 minutes. I think even if it's five minutes for you to apply, it is very easy to apply. Now you fill the details, the objective of the business, what are the outcomes? And then you give out your budget. There's a template. It's not a project proposal that you're going to write the pages. We do has a very simple, it is a user-friendly platform, which you can take even less than five minutes to, make, to submit your application. So it is the responsibility of the entrepreneur to do the thing. Something to note, we've been cautioning entrepreneurs not to let the donor to enter his account. Mm -hmm. On the window platform, we have the site for entrepreneur and we have the site for the donor. The donor is not supposed to enter the account of the entrepreneur. That is violating terms and conditions. If the donor tries to edit anything in the account of the entrepreneur, we will have to know because it shows the IP address that this project has been edited in Germany or maybe Austria. Exactly. So we know that, and it is very wrong. Where the entrepreneur encounters a challenge, he's, he is supposed to screenshot the challenge and then send some mail to Widow attaching the, pro uh, the problem. Then the technical team from Widow will reach the entrepreneur and assist them to fix the project. So the, end, uh, the donor is not allowed to enter, um, to log into entrepreneur's account. So I think I've answered that. Then what happens if the coach and the entrepreneur are not in? Is it synchronization or what? I don't know what uh, I, I They're not getting along. That's how I got the question. Okay. Or getting along. In which, uh, in which way? 
I don't know, maybe there's some conflict of interest. I think she's the the concept of widow is actually very, very simplified. Exactly. It's not as complicated as you people are thinking. <laughs> as long as you do things correctly and the coaches yes. are there to help you out and the widow team, even before they approve your project, they say the coach is coming. If anything is not correct, they will re- they will return your project and say, please verify one, two, three. So they're really trying to make sure that you get the help needed as long as you do it correctly. And anyway, we try to cover as much as possible during the sessions to help you know where, how do I navigate through the system, et cetera, et cetera. So this was just like some of the, we cannot exactly. cover the whole thing, but we try to do as much as possible. Yeah. I think Joshua, we don't want to... Um screen you too much yeah <laughs> yes but we appreciate very much and, uh, and some of the questions we can handle yes. and uh, one of the things that i wanted to say is um and this is what we have been emphasizing that yes. we are doing it for ourselves you know uh-huh. the, yes. the better you do it I'm, I'm just trying to address all those people maybe would have a question don't let the coach to come and uh, uh, scrutinize you. Do it right, then you actually make it easier for the coach to approve it and send all the submission and say, yes, go ahead, you know? And another thing that I wanted to say again, um, one thing that we have been saying, don't steal what you have been given for free. Why, why, why steal it again? <laughs> sure. <laughs> You've been given for free and then you try to steal it. It's, it's really the worst of the worst. But um, because because of the time, because we are